In Affinity 3, you can use the hatch feature to create all kinds of line designs. Those line designs can be broken apart and manipulated in countless ways. I'm going to show you a couple of examples. First thing to do, just go over here and create a rectangle. And I'm going to create it with black here, but it could be any color at this point. What you can then do is just go down here and you've got here the rectangle and the color, fill color. So click there. And then with this, you've got color, gradient and hatch pattern. This is Infinity 3. This is not earlier versions. So hatch pattern, click that. Once you've got that, you can then manipulate it. You can change various things. Just change here the spacing. So let's just change the spacing. And as you do that, you can see you get these lovely lines and you can change the angle. You can change the various spacings, all kinds of things by using this tool. Just go over here and select the fill tool. So with the fill tool, you've got this. But down here, you've got the scale, but also you've got here this hatch line weight. So you can just change that. So let's just increase this. And I'm just gonna go for something like this. Now here, you can change the color here if you want to. You can go with reds, whites, maybe make it transparent as well, perfectly reasonable as well. But I'm just gonna go with white, black and white. If you can't see the context toolbar, go here to view, and then down here to context toolbar and show. Once you've got that, you've got this option here. You can modify the rotation. I'm just gonna go with this, but you can also bake the appearance. And that is very useful. So just click that. And now what you see is you get these lines. In fact, you just get here a group and lines. That's it, but it's within that rectangle. But also you can separate the lines as well. So how to do that? Go here to vector, and there's an option here for separate curves. Really useful feature, just tucked away in the vector menu. And you can go here and click that. And now, instead of a single line, you've got lots of lines. All the lines you can see here, the stripes here, you can see now line, 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 and you can change things, tweak things. If I just click here, you can see what you got then. Just go here and let's just go up to the move tool. And you can see you've got strokes here, black, black strokes, which you can then select and modify and change in countless ways. And let's just move that so you can actually see it. So you can see that there. However, what you can also do is you can expand them into fills, which you can then recolor in even more ways. Maybe apply different gradients, different other designs. So let's just do that. With all the lines selected, just go here and right click and just down here, expand stroke. Select that and now all those lines become curves, which are you can fill. So let's just go over here and select, say this curve here, or maybe just go here and use the move tool and select one of the other curves here. And with that, I can change the color. So let's just go here to window and general and swatches. You can see the layers here as well in the general. So swatches. And what I can do, I'm just gonna go here, not to this one, but I'm just gonna go to colors. This is just the standard palette of swatches. And you can then go down here and you can select the colors. So maybe you decide to go for green and you can recolor the whole thing, maybe green, blue, red, etc. All the lines are recolored now. I've got a few black lines still in there. However, once you've got this, what you can then do is you can apply various other effects with all those lines here, the curves, I should say, all selected. Let's just select all of them. Hold down the shift so they're all selected. You can go here to effects, just click that. And then with this, you can go to 3D or of course, Bevan Boss, etc., And you can add a quick 3D effect here. You can see you do that or maybe you might change and think, let's just go for a bevel emboss. And you can see, just increase that. And you can see you get a lovely bevel emboss effect. Now, because I've got white and previously obviously black, you can see you've got a lovely bevel effect for all of them. There's no transparency in this for obviously the white there. And once you've done that, click close. Once you've done that, you can then click the rectangle. So rectangle selected, you can apply various effects. 
and these could be live effects. So you can change it and still keep the vector design because these are still vectors. So you can manipulate them further if you wish as vectors. So then go up here and pixel and just down to new life filter layer and distort. Maybe use all of these various distortions, glitch, etc. really works well. But also I'm just gonna go with mesh warp. So mesh warp. And now I can just distort this design. So I just drag this in and drag this in that way. It takes a few seconds to process, but it will finally process. And you can see then you get this lovely curved design, which is still live. The vector designs are still live and you can then manipulate them further, maybe recolor them using adjustments, etc. Also, of course, you've got this design, you can rasterize it or maybe apply additional effects. If you've created something you really like, always a good thing, just save it. Obviously you could save it to a file for future use, but you can also save it to the assets. And you can find that in Window and General and Assets. Make certain you select the rectangle, not the mesh warp. With that, just simply go here to the assets and I'm gonna go here to the shapes and then just click here and add from selection. And then that's added over here. Now, what I can do, I can simply drag and create the design again. And there you have it, a second version of that asset. In Affinity 3, you can find a load of hatch designs in the Swatches panel. Here's the Swatches panel. You can find that in Window and General and Swatches. Just go to Hatches. With Hatches, you've got all these different designs. You can just click and apply. I'm gonna go with this one. Also, you can go over here, select the fill tool with that selected. You get this, the context toolbar with a load of options here for changing the scale. So you can increase that or decrease it. Also, you can change here the weight. So I'm just increase that or decrease. And also, if I want, I can change color. So I'm just change it, maybe go with say red. Well, I can now go here and bake appearance. Exactly the same as before, so click that. And now you can see I've got these lines. Well, a single line according to that. But what you can do, I can separate the curves. And you do that in the vector menu and just go down here, separate curves. So select that. Now with that, you can see all these lines. You can manipulate them, of course. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna expand them. So go over here and right click. And you've got the option here, expand stroke. And that, expands all of those, and now you've got fills, which you can then manipulate. You can add additional colors to, you can manipulate them by pasting things inside, maybe images and much, much more. So let's just go and do this now. I've got these curves, I can select the curves. I can just go here, let's say move tool, and select the individual ones here. And you can see now, because we've got this dash design, I can actually select these individual ones so I can recolor those. now. It took a few seconds, a few minutes to recolor all these things. It is a pity there is no feature in Affinity 3 to recolor selected designs with random colors. Be a great feature to add, but it's unfortunately not there. So just has to be done manually, but you can select multiple ones as well. And then just simply select the colors here and select this one. And you can also, of course, resize it, move it. So let's just go and select, say red there and select that one. And you can see if I go to swatches and not hatches, but colors, I can click there, click there, and just randomly change them to different colors. Also, you can use other tools to manipulate this as well. And as mentioned, you could select a whole load of them, say maybe these, I've just locked that one by accident. So I don't know why I did that. And you can see I can change those to orange. Maybe go down here, you can see there's a lot of curves to some change, and maybe go with some greens and so on. You can also go to the Vector Studio and select this, the Vector Flood Fill Tool. They're vectors, and you can then select the color here. So I'm just gonna go with red, and I can click and change the color fairly quickly. Unfortunately, change the color for the whole thing. So undo that. I just wanna click and select that one. But it's quite easy by accident to select one of the other ones as well. So click there and click there. And you can see you can rapidly change the color. Let's just change the color there. Again, clicking the wrong one there. If you 
probably best to zoom in, otherwise it is quite easy to click the background color instead. Then you can select all the curves, so curve and hold down the shift and select all the curves. And again, go to effects, so click effects. Then with that, go to bevel emboss and change the radius. I'm gonna go with the pillow option there, but you could try emboss. Maybe emboss works even nicer. And then click close to give you a nice three dimensional depth to your design. You can also fill other shapes such as diamonds. So just go over here and I'm gonna select the diamond tool and click and drag. Once you've got that, I can now fill it with the hatch designs and I can do that very quickly in the swatches. So go here and go down to hatches and I'm gonna set this one, just a basic design. Oh, maybe that one. However, you'll notice the design isn't particularly great. What you need to do sometimes is go here to the vector and then just down to the fill tool. With the fill tool, you can then just modify the settings here in the context toolbar. So let's just click here and then just change the size there. You can see the width there increased, but also you notice the scale, ridiculous scale, 26,854%. That's, it's quite big. Okay, well, you can just quickly change that and you can reduce down. And as you do that, you will notice you get your design back. So you get something like that. That is definitely something to be aware of. Sometimes you get some very, very high figures just in that first scale setting. So once you've reduced it down again, what you can do if you want some transparency, because at the moment it's not transparent. You've got white and black. It's not transparent. So you need to go here to the context toolbar and just click here, hatch fill color. Just click there and then go here. So once you've done that, you can then see you've got nothing there. So you can see through it. So if I actually added another shape with the same design, you'll be able to see through to see that design. Now I can bake appearance and you can see I've got lines again. Exactly the same as before. I can go to vector, separate curves. And now you see I've got lots and lots of lines. I haven't created something that's got too many different designs in it. So it's gonna be reasonably quick to change the colors. And now I can right click and I can go down here to expand stroke. So expand stroke and I've got this. Now I've still got the diamond structure so you can see the lines are inside that diamond. You can manipulate the diamond so you can just select it and move it around re and use the move tool and reposition it. So you can just do that. But again, if I hold down the ultra option key, I can just show you. You can see now you get that. So you can see through it and create different designs that way. But I don't want to do that first. So now with this, I can now select the curves. So I can go to one of these curves and I can go here and I can set the color. See that one's slightly off so you can't see it. However, I can with the move tool selected, select this one, the ones that of course are visible and change the colors of those. So I can just quickly select all kinds of colors and let's just go up here to colors and say select red. And maybe you want the design to be all red. So you've got a lot of reds in the colors, you can sort them. So you can right click there and we'll just click here, right side menu, I should say, and you can sort them by color. So you get them all in red, which I think is much more useful. And then select those and select that. And you can see as you do it, you can recolor this design. Once you've recolored it, then you can apply a variety of effects to it. So in this case, I'm just gonna go here to the curves, select that at the top and all the way down, hold down the shift. Then I can go down to the bottom here and click effects. So click there and go for 3D. So I'm just gonna go 3D and increase this. And you can modify the profile, etc. So just click there to get a variety of other designs. In fact, I'm just gonna go with remove profile and then close. You can also add shadows, etc. If you wanna duplicate the diamond now, simply select the diamond, the top, and then hold down the alter option key and just drag and duplicate and you can build up a design like that. Also, with the move tool selected, there's the move tool, diamond selected, press return or enter on the keyboard, and you get this panel pop up. And then of course you can go to duplicate and number of copies, and you can change the scale, and you can see you can create a variety of different designs that way, rotation, etc. Create some quite unique sort of spiral designs, and click OK, undo. Another great thing about this is that you can modify the lines themselves. So just go here, select one of the curves. Let's just select this one. Again, make certain you've got the move tool 
and move tool there and I want to select that one. So with that, I can now resize it. So let's just resize it and move it around. Maybe duplicate the design. So hold down the ultra option key and then resize that. And you see, I can add very quickly additional lines to this. You don't have to keep it exactly the same. Maybe select this one, and maybe rotate it. Maybe create slight different angles for each of the designs like that. Maybe resize and make it thinner. And again, just drag, hold down the ultra option key and drag again, and maybe create additional lines. Whole random load of different designs can be created by just selecting them and modifying them. And again, you can go over here, don't have to have them all with the same effects. You can always click here and then go here to 3D, maybe go to outer shadow and just add an outer shadow to say one or two of the designs and close. So you've got something like that. Again, you can always then with the move tool, make certain you just go up here and select the diamond and you can duplicate this diamond. So let's just resize it like that. And maybe hold down the ultra option key and drag down like that, build up a complex design of different diamonds like that. And, or maybe use it as a pattern source and much, much more in Affinity 3. Hope you found this of interest. Any questions and thoughts, please put in the comments below. Bye.